with an artist like Prince who has kind of an established way of working and, and uh, is famous for his, his methods and things, going in as an engineer and having your own production style that you work with, how did you adapt to working with him? Well, he is a very, he, he is the, the most talented musician that I've ever worked with and he's also really particular and very difficult. So I would want to be mentally prepared for a session with Prince and also I would have every piece of gear that I could have ever imagined that he would want to try uh, set up, connected, and sound going to tape. It was analog at the time. Uh, so everything was ready to go. So he would come in the room and look around the room and he would be going for a certain guitar and I'd have it in record. Uh, you know, by the time he, he made a sound out of it, it was being recorded. Um, and, uh, that, and it was an amazing time because he not only is playing uh, incredibly, but he's also dancing and spinning on his heels, you know, and doing a little show. And it's just me and Prince together in the studio. And it was just like what, my own private show, you know. <laughs> wow. But uh, the, they were difficult times too because he basically had a, a whole team of engineers on tether basically so he, he, he any time of day or night he would just say um, he would call I'd hear the phone ring at 4 a.m. and, and it, it'd be like Sylvia come to the studio it's like, okay here I go you know right, right. but it was great great right. so did he come in with the, the the music kind of conceptualized in his head and then he was just realizing using the, the good was there or was he composing on the spot both, but I think a lot of it was already composed in his head, and he had a very particular way of doing things uh, where he was recycling songs from the revolution at the time. So he would pull things out of the library, the, the archive at Paisley Park, and he would get seven copies of a certain song, um, seven two-inch reel-to-reel -reel copies of a song. And then he'd have this this copy shipped to the studio, this copy shipped to the studio, and it, then he would um, erase the lead vocal and erase a couple other tracks, keep basically the drums, maybe the bass line even, keep the percussion, and then he would re-record different parts. Um, so all of a sudden he had seven new songs, and and there was one for Paula Abdul, but it was actually the same song that Louie Louie got you know, just reworked a little bit different. And if you really listen carefully to some of his catalog around the 90s, in, in the early 90s, um, you'll hear that the, there's many songs that are actually the same, but just reworked in different ways. And it, very clever, and he'd have several studios going at the same time, um, each with a different team inside. And, and I noticed that when I started working with Rick Rubin, he, Rick had the same style, where he'd have several projects going at the same time. And Rick's uh, talent is in choosing a team to work on a certain project. He would uh, first choose the music for the project. Then he would choose, OK, I want this engineer. I want this mixer. I want this programmer. Uh, we're going to get this drummer. Uh, you know, and, and he would very carefully tailor a session and then he would just kind of stop in and check in on it to make sure nothing's getting screwed up too much, you know. And he, if, if, it, if it wasn't going in the right direction, he would steer it. And then he would let it happen on its own. And I truly admire him for, for his style of um, production. Prince generally likes to do the vocals himself. So before... Uh, uh, when it when it came to the time the time and uh, the recording of a song to do vocals, I would have a microphone hanging over the console, uh, and he would do his own. He would sing and control the recorder uh, on his own, and I'd be kicked out. I'd be sitting outside the door of the of the studio, and it might take it generally would take around four hours and he'd come walking out and he'd say, mix it. And then I'd go in and for the first time hear what he'd worked on, and amazing. Just, you know, with layers and background vocals and all kinds of little ooh, ooh kind of things, you know, it was great. Right, right. so yeah. when he would come back then and hear the mixes, did he have a lot of changes or did he trust the mixes that you, that you created? Surprisingly, uh, he liked a lot of the mixes that I did. Um, and I went crazy with him too. I was like, well, what the hell, you know? He could hate it and so what, you know? 
So I would go pretty nutsoid with, with these mixes and go radical with crazy delays and just to see what he, how he would react. And I think he liked it a lot. Right, nice, nice. Mm -hmm. What about working with Rick Rubin? Did he have a vision for the mixes, or did he say, mix this and then I'll come in? How, was, how did he handle that? Rick has a very specific way of working, um, and uh, it really, it was, his, his, uh, the genres of music that he works on are so varied that you have to kind of take an approach, a new approach with each project. Like for the Johnny Cash record that I worked with him, I did a record called Unchained. Um, it was a, we, we tried to go for a really vintage sound. So um, the microphones that I used were generally two microphones and I used um, stay level, gate stay level, a vintage gate stay level and a UA, um, a universal audio uh, 175B, which is the predecessor to the 1176 for compression. And we'd get it kind of furry, you know, we'd get it, give it a little, uh, give it that edge, so give it that old timey kind of flavor. Um, and uh, so, Rick would come in and he would make uh, judgments about the mix, but generally in that in that uh, environment with the with the uh, Johnny Cash record, uh, he uh, he, he uh, approved everything that I did on that project. The interesting thing about Rick's um, working, uh, he loves working on the Neves and the and the old Neves seventy two. There was no panning for um, for a mix for the monitor section. It was either center, left, or right, all the way. So you'll hear a lot of Rick's, Rick's uh, records uh, that were mixed on the Neves, uh, the old Neves, that they're very much, there's nothing, no panning over here, you know, and a little bit of here and that. It's all the way over and all the way over and right down the middle, you know, and bone dry. It's very exciting. Yeah.